Assalamu alaikum students, this is your instructor Muhammad Umar Khatak for the subject Organizational Theory and Behavior. This is our 20th lecture and chapter number 6. And today the topic of our discussion is Ethics and Improving Creativity in Decision Making. Ethics in Decision Making Ethical consideration should be an important criterion in all organizational decision making. Three ethical decisions criteria. The first ethical yardstick is utilitarianism, which proposes making decisions solely on the basis of their outcome, ideally to provide the greatest good for the greatest number. This view dominates business decision making. It is consistent with goals such as efficiency, productivity, and high profits. Another ethical criterion is to make decisions consistent with fundamental liberties and privileges as set for forth in documents such as the Bill of Rights and the Constitution of the Country. An emphasis on rights in decision-making means respecting and protecting the basic rights of individuals, such as the right to privacy, free speech, and the right to due process. This criterion protects whistleblowers when they reveal an organization's unethical practices to the press or government agencies, using their right to free speech. A third criterion is to impose and enforce the rules fairly and impartially to ensure justice or an equitable distribution of benefits and costs. Union members typically favor this view. It justifies paying people the same wage for a given job regardless of performance differences and using seniority as the primary determination in layoff decisions. Each criterion has advantages and liabilities. A focus on utilitarianism promotes efficiency and productivity, but it can sideline the rights of some individuals, particularly those with minority representation. The use of right protects individuals from injury and is consistent with freedom and privacy, but it can create a legalistic environment that hinders productivity and efficiency. A focus on justice protects the interests of the underrepresented and less powerful, but it can encourage a sense of entitlement that reduces risk taking, innovation, and productivity. Decision makers, particularly in for profit organizations, feel comfortable with utilitarianism. The best interest of the organization and the stockholders can justify a lot of questionable actions and such a large such as large layoffs but many critics feel this perspective needs to change public concerns about individual rights and social justice suggest managers should develop ethical standards based on non-utilitarian criteria this presents a challenge because satisfying individual rights and social justice creates far more ambiguities than utilitarian effects on efficiency and profits However, while raising prices, selling products with questionable effects on consumer health, closing down inefficient plants, laying off large number of employees, and moving production overseas to cut costs can be justified in utilitarian terms. They may no longer be the single measure by which good decisions are judged. Improving Creativity in Decision Making Although the rational decision-making model will often improve decisions, a rational decision-maker also needs creativity, the ability to produce novel and useful ideas. These are different from what's been done before, but appropriate 
to the problem presented. Creativity allows the decision maker to more fully appraise and understand the problem, including seeing the problem others can see. L'Oreal puts its managers to creative exercises such as cooking or making music. And the University of Chicago requires MBA students to make short movies about their experiences. Creative Potential Most people have useful creative potential, but to unleash it, they have to escape the psychological ruts many of us fall into and learn how to think about a problem in divergent ways. Exceptional creativity is scarce. We all know of the creative geniuses in science, Albert Einstein, art, Pablo Picasso, and business, Steve Jobs. But what about the typical individual? Intelligent people and those who score high on openness to experience are more likely to be creative. Other traits of creative people are independence, self-confidence, risk-taking, an internal locus of control, tolerance for ambiguity, a low need for structure, and perseverance. Exposure to a variety of cultures can also improve creativity. So taking an international assignment or even an international vacation could jumpstart your creative process. A study of lifetime creativity of six, 461 men and women found fewer than 1% were exceptionally creative, but 10% were, were highly creative, and about 60% were somewhat creative. This reinforces the, that most of us have creative potential. We just need to learn to unleash it. Three component model of creativity. What can individuals and organization do to stimulate employees' creativity? The best answer lies in the three component model of creativity, which proposes that individual creativity essentially requires expertise, creative thinking skills, and intrinsic task motivation. Studies confirm that the higher the level of each, the higher the creativity. Expertise is the foundation for all creative work. Film writer, producer and director Quentin Tarantino spent his youth working in video rental store, where he built up an encyclopedic knowledge of movies. The potential for creativity is enhanced when individuals have abilities, knowledge, proficiencies and similar expertise in their field of endeavor. You wouldn't expect someone with minimal knowledge of programming to be very creative as a software engineer. The second component is creative thinking skills. This encompasses personality characteristics associated with creativity, the ability to use analogies, and the talent to see the familiar in a different light. <clears throat> Some people develop creative skills because they see problems in a new way. For instance, most of us think of hens laying eggs, but how many of us have considered that a hen is only an egg's way of making another egg? Being around creative others can make us inspired, especially if we are creatively stuck. One study found that having weak ties to creative people, knowing them but not well, facilitates creativity because the people are there as a resource if we need them but not so close as to stunt our own independent thinking. Analogies allow decision makers to apply an idea from one context to another. One of the most famous examples was Alexander Graham Bell. His observation that it might be possible to apply the way ear operates to his talking box. 
Bell noticed the bones in the ear are operated by a delicate thin membrane. He wondered why a thicker and stronger membrane shouldn't be able to move a piece of steel. From that analogy, the telephone was conceived. Thinking in terms of analogies is a complex intellectual skill, which helps explain why cognitive ability is related to creativity. Demonstrating this effect, one study found children who got high scores on cognitive ability tests at age 13 were significantly more likely to have made creative achievements in their professional lives 25 years later. Some people develop creative skills because they see problems in a new way. Creative people often love their work to the point of seeming obsession. The final component in the three component model of creativity is intrinsic task motivation. This is the desire to work on something because it's interesting, involving exciting, satisfying or personally challenging. It's what turns creativity potential into actual creative ideas. Environmental stimulants that foster creativity include a culture that encourages the flow of ideas, fair and constructive judgment of ideas, rewards and recognition for creative work, sufficient financial material and information resources, freedom to decide what work is to be done and how to do it. A supervisor who communicates effectively shows confidence in others and supports the work group and work group members who support and trust each other. Summary and implications for managers. Perception. Individuals base their behavior not on the way their external environment actually is, but rather on the way what they see or believe it to be. Whether a manager successfully plans and organizes the work of the employees and actually helps them to structure their work more efficiently and effectively is far less important than how employees perceive the manager's efforts. <clears throat> employees judge issues such as fair pay, performance appraisals and working conditions in a very individual way. To influence productivity, we need to assess how workers perceive their jobs. Absenteeism, turnover and job satisfaction are also reactions to an individual's perception. Dissatisfaction with working conditions and the belief that an organization lacks promotion opportunities are judgments based on attempts to create meaning in the job. The employee's conclusion that a job is good or bad is an interpretation. Managers must spend time understanding how each individual interprets reality and, and when there is a significant difference between what someone sees and what exists, try to eliminate the distortions. Individual Decision Making Individuals think and reason before they act. This is why an understanding of how, of how people make decisions can be helpful for explaining and predicting their behavior. In some decision in situations, people follow the rational decision-making model. But few important decisions are simple or unambiguous enough for the rational model's assumptions to apply. So we find individuals looking for solutions that satisfy rather than optimize, ejecting biases and prejudices into the decision process and relying on intuition. What can managers do to improve their decision making? We offer four suggestions. Analyze the situation, adjust your decision making approach, to the national culture you are operating in 
and to the criteria your organization evaluates and rewards. If you are in a country that doesn't value rationality, don't feel compelled to follow the rational decision-making model or try to make your decisions appear rational. Similarly, organizations differ in importance they place on risk, the use of groups and the like. Adjust your decision approach to ensure it's compatible with the organization's culture. Second, be aware of biases, then try to minimize their impact. Third, combine rational analysis with intuition. These are not conflicting approaches to decision making. By using both, you can actually improve your decision-making effectiveness. As you gain managerial experience, you should feel increasingly confident in imposing your intuitive processes on top of your rational analysis. Finally, try to enhance your creativity, actively look for novel solutions to problems, Attempt to see problems in a new ways and use analogies. Try to remove work and organizational barriers that might impede your creativity. That would be the end of the lecture. Thank you.